How's it going guys? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be meeting up with my buddy in his Golf R and we're going to start the process for bringing his car from totally stock to stage two. Uh, today I think he wants to do the intercooler. He might want to do some other things, but we're going to pull that bumper off, put the bigger intercooler on there. Did want to give a quick update though on the Op7 and Diode Dynamics light installs real quick though. So I was running into this issue where I was getting power drawn from the battery. Uh, what I figured out it was actually what happened to make the whole thing into context, the OnStar app kept sending me a notification that the car was still running. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm on the golf course right now. Like, the car is definitely off. So what I figured out was it was either the Op7 or the Diodynamics was always drawing power, which I sort of expected was going to happen, but I figured I'd try it without switches at first. Either way that happens, I installed switches, so I wanted to show you guys where I put those. For the Diodynamics setup, I put one right back here. As you can see... Just quick on off, uh, the power still coming from that fuse in there. And then for the OP7, same thing. Ended up installing it right here. So easy, really easy uh, modification to add to those. Um, if somebody's a little confused, just put down in the comments below if you're looking to do something like that. I can show you guys, I can pretty much walk you through it via the comments. So feel free to post anything if you have any questions about that. But for now, we're gonna head over to the shop get ready to put his car up on the lift and start working on that intercooler and maybe a little more. So stay with us. All right guys, this is Jason's 2018 Golf R, it's a MK 7.5. So that's one of the big reasons we're doing this video is to show you guys the difference between with the 7 and the 7.5. The 7.5 had different wheels, fake front fascia, correct? Yep. And uh, so there are gonna be a couple differences when it comes to installing this intercooler as well as the other parts that he's looking to do to get to stage two. So he's got a lot of different plans for this. We're just gonna be doing the intercooler today, but uh, I ex hope to see this more on the channel so we can follow the builds on this. And uh, the main goals, what are the main goals for this? You wanna get it sub four second for the zero to 60? Zero to 60 in less than four seconds. All right, mm -hmm. that sounds, sounds pretty damn achievable. I mean, they're already pretty quick from the factory. So yeah, really cool car, all wheel drive. Um, the What is it, the four motion? all-wheel drive system in there um, and then it's the automatic so it's the DSG automatic right yep, seven, nice. speed. seven speed damn cool and then of course two liter turbo awesome guys well we're gonna head over to the shop damn that's a big intercooler for such a little car holy crap oh yeah look at that thing it's literally like I can't even show you it's literally the length of my arm so what gets you to stage two the intercooler downpipe uh, and also the uh, intake, cold air intake and uh, uh, intake pipe on the, the inlet side of the turbo. Okay, and then after that you just need to get a tune from a authorized APR dealer, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Okay, well, first we're going to get the car up in the air so we can protect our backs. But we're going to get the, uh, the bumper off of it and we'll be able to pull the stock intercooler and be able to throw that one on. He said it's a pretty uh, simple process, usually it takes about two hours. So, here we go. It's brand new, it can't break. So Jason really wants to go for the sleeper look, so he's trying to make a, you know, get a quiet performance exhaust, everything like that. So I think we should take the R badges off of it and completely go sleeper. Nobody would know. Take the wheels, get like steelies, just make it completely sleeper. Not only would it not be catfish, you wouldn't even be a ghost at that point. Right? <laughs> so this one's unique because it's a an 18.5, right? Or MK 7.5, something like that? 7.5. So 7.5. So the instructions may be a little different than what we have to do for this one. Um, we'll see exactly. So far, everything's the same. Uh, I'm going to start making you bolt piles. bumper. Worst case, I'll go back into the footage and we'll figure out what's what. So as we quickly learned, we're going to need to turn the wheel so that we can get in there with the Torx bit. But what are these T25s or T20s? Tw uh, T25s. T25s for the 7.5. So that's one difference. The uh, 7 was just a T20. All right, so right now we are working getting the bottom off. Well, I'm not really doing much actually, to be honest. I'm I'm sort of here just for moral support at this point. <laughs> I guess I'm going to be like the tool runner if it comes down to it because, I mean, I don't really know much about this car, so. 
It's also a brand new car, and I'm worried that if I break something, I will be having to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got the skid plate off, but you will not believe this. I have never seen this before in my entire life, but I think the, oh no, 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 no way. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I can't tell. Yeah, this pan right here is plastic. I don't know if it's for the transmission or if it's for the oil. I don't see an oil filter, so I'm gonna imagine it's the transmission. But whatever the hell that is, it's plastic. I've seen plastic intake manifolds. I have never seen a plastic oil pan. All right, so right now we are popping this off. It's gonna, it's gonna make some noises. You're gonna get nervous. It's, it, you gotta pull. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I know. The first time I did it too, you're just like, oh god, here, I'm gonna hold this side so it doesn't come flying off. So, first time this bumper's ever come off, so we're trying to make sure that it actually is, uh, there's nothing else holding it on, making sure that the new model is not different from the other one, and we're gonna tug off and rip a, a bolt or anything like that. So we're just taking our time with it, watching the video a couple times, peeking in as much as we can, so give us a minute here. All right, so that was a little nerve wracking. Uh, first time pulling a bumper, so it did not want to come off, but it came off. The only two clips were on the driver's side right here. Uh, what'd you do for this? You just lifted that little level right there, yep. put a little pressure on that. So you put a little pressure on it right there, it pops off. And then there was one that was attached to the back of the logo. Same thing, you just put a little pressure right here on top. So we put the bumper over here on the side, kept it away from the other car, stuff like that. And we're gonna start working to get that intercooler off now. I go for it. All right, so now we're gonna take off this plastic bumper guard piece. Uh, looks like some more sets of uh, torque screws. This one happens to be T30. So once you get those two bolts out, it looks like there's two pins that are down under here. So we're trying to pull those out right now. Look at all the extra cooling this thing has. Like if they did this to the SS, and made all of ours functional, you know, we got those fake side vents, at least he doesn't have those, you know. But that is pretty sick. Not only does that cooling go through, but then it goes through the tire, probably gets the brakes and everything like that. That's pretty sick. So once you get that black piece off that goes across, you gotta unscrew these two bolts right here, then come underneath, and there's this ambient air temperature sensor. Pop that off. And then you go and you unplug the horn, which Jason's working on right now. Just getting everything out of the way so that you can, what I believe, remove this completely off the, the bumper rail that attaches to the frame. So, and what else are we unplugging over here? Oh, you got two horns. Two horns. Damn. Can't afford twin turbos, but we can afford twin horns. I had to get some water quick, but now that I'm on my way back, I figured I'd show you guys the uh, other areas they have here. So. Used a couple of the different stuff in here, but this is one area where they have bigger tools for different projects. It's pretty cool. Oh no, danger. That's no bueno. Never want to see that on a press. What else they got over here? Oh, sandblaster. All different kinds of stuff. It's a pretty cool setup. But back to the car. What'd I miss? Did I miss anything? I missed nothing? Awesome. What are we doing now? Now we're moving, removing the, the T30 torch bolts from the uh, radiator support. Okay, so we're moving those bolts. I'm imagining then you got to get the ones behind that that are actually attached to the frame. Uh, yeah, if you're trying to get the entire thing off, that yeah. seems to be the way. Cool. All right, so once you remove those bolts right up here and down here, you're going to come up top and you're going to remove these two bolts. Following that, you move into the four that connect it to the frame, then that should pop right off. Uh, I don't know why they want you to go for these in the middle, uh, maybe so you don't forget, but we're just following instructions here. All right guys, so I think we found our biggest thing on the uh, 7.5s here that's a little different. You're gonna have to take your headlights off to get that bolt out. That bolt's still threaded a little bit here in the back. Uh, there's definitely no way we're gonna make it. All right, so luckily the headlight's pretty easy to remove. It's just one bolt right in here. Got another one right up here, and then your third one, which is right here. So you take those three off, and that'll give us a ton of clearance to get that bolt out, so. And just like that, it's out of there. So yeah, we just loosened it up enough. 
so that we could get underneath it and move it out of the way. So that is an option if you want to do that. All right, so we got that bumper support off. Got it over here now. All came off nice and easy. Uh, what are we working on now? Removing these guards here. Okay, so just unclipping the guards. But I mean, it's barely in there. We were sort of sketched that when we took it off that it was just gonna fall. We did not know what it was being held on by. All right, so unclipping the radiator supports. All right, so when you're popping these out, oh, let me give you a better, here we go. So when you're popping these out, uh, you know, when you're hitting this, you put the one on the top and you're gonna put another one in here and pry it off. Uh, I suggest getting a really big fill up or flathead for in here to pry this one and then you can use a smaller flathead in the back to push that. Um, yeah, that'll make it a lot easier for you guys. All right, so another difference between the uh, 7.5 and the 7, the washer fluid does not need to be messed with. That's usually over here on the 7, but it's over here for the 7.5, so we don't need to touch that. All right, so the next thing we're doing is unbolting the two bolts down here and over in here, right in there. Uh, both of those are the top of the radiator support, so we're going to pull those, and then you'll be able to slide that up. All right, so another big difference is that yellow sensor right there on this one needs to be unclipped. So we're working to get that off on this side now. Um, then hopefully this radiator support should come off. So we deemed it necessary. The headlight needs to come off. Not sure if that one's going to have to come off yet, but at least to get this one off, we'll be able to slide it off and get it over here. Oh man, it's about to go. Oh man. So I'm going to get that cover off right now. You know, that guy in the video does this so graceful, so I want to bring it up again. Uh, we're not trying to do a better video than APR or AR. Is it APR? I got it right that time, right? Yes, APR. Sorry, I always think ARP, like the bolt company. So, uh, or maybe they're the same. I can't remember. Either way, we're, we're not trying to do a better video than we're trying to show the differences between the 7 and the 7.5. And then uh, also just vlog out his, uh, his build here. While he's struggling, I'm going to work to gain him horsepower. There. Oh, yeah. Yeah, clearing this out will definitely pick up at least five to six. All right, working to get the condenser out. So that's what it's for. It's not a transmission cooler. It's just a condenser. That's disappointing. I was really hoping you had, like, the biggest stock transmission cooler ever. Do you have a transmission? Oh, nope, nope, that's just a fan. I thought I saw another little one back there. No, nothing. Maybe, the, no, What? Are, I wonder what these ones are for. Do you know what these inlets are for? I think that might be the transmission or the brakes. Brakes or transmission. I, I can see it cooling the brakes back here, but I don't know about, yeah. Post in the comments if you know what these are cooling on both sides. Please and thank you. All right, so we disconnected the hoses, and then after we disconnect the hose, we're gonna be taking these picks off, or picking these off, and that should pop that right off. We might have a little bit of resistance. Nope, no more resistance after that. Oh, maybe just down there. Guess we'll find out here in a second. Just working to get those picks out of there. Picking those out of there. I already got this side off, so I'm gonna start holding this. Boom. Nice, that thing's gonna come out. Oh, let me get, let me get the side. It's released. Sort of. Come on. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Now throw it over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're getting ready to pull the uh, the new one out of the box. Can't wait to see the, the comparison. Okay, maybe this one is bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I think I uh, just haven't seen it in a little bit. So uh, I think we've, we, what did you say it was supposed to take two hours? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, so we're, we're honestly at what? We're probably already at two hours. Yeah. True. So, but I mean, we're not professionals. There's a lot of brand new things that didn't want to come undone, which is fine. We got time. But let's see this thing mounted next to the other one. Just gonna do the, the nudge method here, ready? One nudge, two nudges, and this, just one nudge. Mm, that's. That's air, that's cooling right there. All right, putting the uh, little bit of styrofoam strip there. 
so it's not right on top of the radiator. All right, got the new tubes in, mounted this. Start with the bottom first, and then you'll like sort of push it up and it will uh, clip back into its original place there, but that's all set to go. Now we're just gonna start bolting everything back up. guys that's gonna be it for this upload hope you enjoyed the beginning of that build if you have any questions make sure you uh, put them down below and uh, make sure you're liking and subscribing to the channel the entire build for that car is gonna be uh, captured hopefully on this channel so I don't think he's gonna do anything without me hopefully hopefully not I think I, I think I did a pretty good job helping out today but either way like I said if you guys have any questions put them down below myself or Jason will probably be monitoring the comments to uh, see if you guys have any questions for him about how the build's gonna go or anything like that so thanks a lot guys have a good one